So here we are at the Wallingford Passive House. We are underway, been going for a few, uh, two months now. And uh, we've got a nice big basement going, a nice big foundation set up. So, and, and we're just starting the framing, just started uh, putting up studs yesterday. But the real story here is what we're doing in the, er in the ground and taking it all the way to the top. So uh, it, the, the design driver meant that this building had to go pretty darn low in the ground. So we, are, we have a full 10 foot wall on this side and uh, we're gonna go all the way to the maximum height limit up at the, up at the peak. We're gonna have four stories in this building. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's an infill site. Uh, and uh, we, we removed an old house, older house, and uh, salvaged as what we could. And then we're replacing it with a brand new structure, brand new passive house. We've got a, uh, a new building next door, which has a fairly shallow foundation. So since we have a very tight site, we actually had to use, do some, some substantial shoring work. And that required a very extensive uh, foundation. And we did not want to include any complications for, um, for insulation, for thermal insulation between the foundation and the exterior. It was just, it was a very complicated setup already. So behind this wall, we have some soldier piles and they go 10 feet tall. Um, there's I-beams driven into the soil encased in, uh, in, in grout and uh, lagging between the soldier piles. Then we poured this foundation wall, this eight inch foundation wall directly against that, la uh, that lagging, against that shoring. So uh, we, there's no way to get insulation on the other side of this concrete wall. So well, th I'm standing in the garage, uninsulated, unconditioned garage. This wall right behind me is gonna be the insulated wall defining the thermal envelope on the exterior from the interior. Uh, that's gonna be their basement uh, living area, family area. And so the insulation starts right there. So behind me, you see some EPS foam, that's six inches of foam. That actually goes down to the top of footing and then underneath the slab area. So we've got uh, uh, that, some areas of this slab behind me are structural slabs. So there's some thickened portions with uh, high density foam below those areas. Other areas, it's generally just, uh, it's a low de lower density insulation foam. We have eight inches of foam down below in two layers uh, that's making its way underneath the thickened portions. So there's, a, there's a, a bearing wall that goes across the middle. There's a very large point load that comes down from all the way up above, uh, two big steel beams carrying the roof structure and the floor structure. So there's a large footing over in the back corner there. Um, and, uh, and, and over here, maybe let's get it. There's a, an elevator pit. It's an agent place. These folks are gonna be here for a very long time. Um, and uh, they foresee needing an elevator at some point, so we have an elevator pit in the, over in this area, and uh, that will uh, run all the way through. So that is the one low spot in that area. Because of the topography here, even though it's very slight, the house on the south side is about three feet lower than the house on the, on the north side, so we didn't have to do the extensive shoring the, uh, on, on the south portion or the west portion. We could just use uh, eco blocks. Um, so that was that, that's the kind of the complexity uh, uh, that went that went into this infill uh, foundation. Um, and uh, but in order to be able to maximize the uh, buildable buildable area on the on the lot, we had to go fairly deep and have some fairly extensive shoring.